Welcome to Best in Class. My name is AJ Madden. I help individuals and organizations become best in class at what they do. Uh, very honored to have our uh, guest here today. Uh, one of the most impressive uh, life resumes, accomplishments, uh, life experience, backgrounds. It's always a real honor to have a Navy SEAL uh, who also has so much range in terms of leadership and business as well. On top of just being a SEAL, which is, uh, in my estimation, uh, Navy SEALs are, uh, in terms of mental, uh, physical, and emotional uh, excellence, it's it's the best in the business. Uh, this is uh, John McLaren. Real uh -huh. honor to have him. And with an, and let me tell you a little bit about John. With an unwavering commitment to excellence and a proven track record in the field, John B. McLaren, best known as Coach Mac, boasts an impressive 38 years of combined experience in naval intelligence, the U.S. Navy SEAL teams, and in the realm of business, executive, and leadership development. Coach Mac brings an exceptional level of expertise in personal and professional growth, business coaching, risk assessment, executive development, and team leadership. Coach Mack, the esteemed national director for the Eagle One Navy SEAL, SWCC, and Special Operations Candidate Program, has made an indelible mark. His leadership has resulted in impressive, incredible 95% plus BUDS graduation rate, far surpassing the standard 10%, making it the most successful Navy SEAL candidate preparation program in the nation. Through the Eagle One program, a mentoring and training initiative focused on diversity, Coach Mack's commitment to excellence shines through as he guides and produces a remarkable number of active duty Navy SEAL and Special Operations graduates. Coach Mack's groundbreaking training program known as Leadership Biomechanics, the neuroscience of absolute responsibility, has been delivered nationwide in various educational and professional settings. Coach Mack, honored to have you. Welcome to Best in Class. Thank you. It's uh, always a challenge to uh, follow up by uh, reading a bio, reading a bio, but I suppose it's uh, better than the obituary. So it's better than having someone <laughs> read your obituary. So I'll take, I'll take the bio for now. So it's good. One more day. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's just quite, quite extraordinary. The, the positive impact you had, you've had and continue to have not just your accomplishments as a SEAL and as a very successful entrepreneur, but also the mentoring you do and the volunteering and the giving back and, and helping all kinds of people, which I don't think was expressed enough in the by all the work you do to serve others just out of the goodness of your heart, um, which is, I just have to acknowledge that. And I always respect and admire, you know, someone of your caliber an accomplishment who also uh, serves at the level we, you do. And in our definition of best in class, is a hundred percent commitment to excellence and service in everything you do. And, and, and coach Mac, uh, you, you really embody that. And I was excited for today's conversation to, to learn from an expert in terms of leadership and overall performance. Um, we have a lot of uh, high performers listening right now who, who uh, are always looking to get 1% better than yesterday. My first question for you, coach Mac is what are maybe three key mindsets that will help someone become best in class at what they do become successful well um first of all thanks for having me i appreciate it uh when i as i said i've uh, I read so much of your website and then reread it i i tend to read things a few times when uh um no matter what but when they're exciting i kind of read them a few times because you get excited you lose start to lose content but um i i the, the question's pretty amazing there's so many things about 18 or 19 years ago i um was in an airport bookstore which I'm sure you've been in a lot of. And uh, I always joke that that there are so many amazing writers, like you've got great books, all these things. And I would sit in there and think, none of these materials, like there's books in the bookstore on how to you know, get your old relationship back, make the best relationship, the best business, save your business, build a business, start a business, lose fat, gain weight. You should be able to solve every single problem in the world in the airport bookstore. Philosophy books, science books, religious books, everything, fitness books. And... Um, I was traveling a lot back and forth working overseas and I just thought, gosh, all this amazing stuff. So uh, why do we keep doing the same things? Why do we keep having the same problems in business, the same problems in life, the same problems in sports, the same problems in relationships. And, um, and it dawned on me to go on this mission to say all these books, all these authors, all these incredibly amazing writers and educated folks that they, they can't be wrong. 
it's just gotta be something missing. And so in all my years in the SEAL teams and uh, uh, intelligence and working contract work, and I do a tremendous amount of domestic violence and stalking work and child sexual safety stuff, things like that, violence prevention and response, I call it. I realized there wasn't anything wrong with these systems. In fact, they were brilliant. It's that there were gaps. And I use the expression, and that's where some of these sayings come from. I use the expression that there's all this tremendous intelligence and these fantastic educated writers and leaders and speakers. It's like starting in a ladder on five and with concepts, you know, concepts. I won't talk about this uh, if you're interested, um, is that a brain doesn't do well in concepts. So I really started going down the road and studying the neuroscience of everything the neuroscience of business, the neuroscience of sport, anything I could get my hands on thinking something's missing, those first rungs, that first rung, second rung, third rung on a ladder. And so a lot of these, uh, a lot of the little sayings or little things we do are just what I've come up with of how to phrase it over time. And we all know them. Rare Admiral Craven says, if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. Well, if you wanted to elevate to use your when you're on your site as says elevate your mind uh, become one percent better you've already made so many phrasings in a short time to to like things that if someone just listened to little sentences they'd already be on their way right they'd already be on their way so um what i found was uh, so my entire program and most of my work is just the navy has an incredible program buds training why aren't people making it i didn't need to redefine buds I need to figure out why they're not making it and figure out what the runs in that ladder were, which I think is what you and I are doing in our business practices, right? We're taking amazing people with amazing companies or, or uh, projects and saying, where's the gaps? Because they're already doing something. They're already killing it in certain areas all the time. We, I, I think uh, in knowing you, uh, in just the length that I have, we're working with rock stars and they're already killing it. So they're not doing anything wrong. We're just filling the gaps and saying, what's uh, what do we miss? So, if I look at some of the tenants there, your, your questions were great as best in class is um, one of the things I found most important in all this neuroscience work, leadership work is that people, uh, we, we often don't understand our brains default setting. Our default setting is actually decide whether you're right or wrong, whether you're good or bad. That is actually minimizing our view every time we do it. So every time I say, oh my gosh, that's so great, you're right. My IQ, my available IQs drop down a little bit. I also am not listening to you anymore. I'm having my own conversation in my head. We, you don't mind because we're in agreement. We're having a good time and we're laughing. But what's happened? So I would say the awareness of our brain's default setting, which is what I call the left board, our limbic system, just because when I started doing this up in Berkeley, um, actually it was when I started with two boards on the wall some years ago, and there was a board on the left and a board on the right. So it just became that way that we started to find the limbic system on the left board and prefrontal cortex on the right. But um, Rear Admiral McRaven said, to get back to your question, he said, if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. It turns out that for your brain, that puts you in this incredible position um, to write your software for the day. You know, we wake up in the morning and what typically if I ask a class, especially a younger class, what's the first thing you do in the morning, pick up their phone. We couldn't do much more to damage our software writing potential than to pick up our phone in the first, uh, I had, it's, it's hard for me still. I talk about this daily. I still want to pick up my phone, right? Cause it's a cheap thrill, right? Your brain goes bing, but, um, uh, if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. How do you spend the first 20 minutes of your day? So we talk about the key mindsets. The first thing I would say is, hey, start your first 20 minutes of your day very specifically. And I don't mean regimented. I mean, in a way that actually allows you to write your best software. When you and I go to sleep, our cerebral spinal fluid, everything, it's all cleaning out our brain. Our, our brain is the most rested it can be when we wake up in the morning. It's the most clear. It has the least amount of junk in it because we're not running processes through it at the rate that we are all day. So when you wake up, if you spend about 20 minutes doing things like key mindsets would be um, make your bed, brush your teeth, take a shower. It turns out that all of those things let you write the most positive, creative, problem-solving software. We're lucky to get up and in the first 20 minutes, we think, oh, what's going on? What's going on for the day? I got to check my emails. I have to see what 
assault is coming today, what I need to assault and not. And yet you've just been asleep for a bunch of hours. The world can wait another 15 or 20 minutes. Like logically, we know this, that another 20 minutes isn't going to hurt anything. So one of the biggest mindsets is how you start is how you finish. His expression with the SEAL candidates, start fast, finish fast, start slow, finish slow. But how you start the first 20 minutes of your day changes your entire day because the brain wants to do what it does. So if I let my email or I let TikTok or I let, I love watching science videos and things like that, any, anything really interesting, but still that's someone else's input and thought. Um, so your personal hygiene program, getting in the shower in the morning, brushing your teeth at length, not being in a hurry, all these things, not being in a hurry in the first half an hour of your morning will change your life. And also, uh, making the bed, brushing your teeth. It turns out that in neuroscience research tells us that those things allow your unconscious mind a chance to sift up and be useful to your conscious mind. You ever been in the shower and all of a sudden it's you, what you're going to do that day? Like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Well, it's people would say, I think it must be the water. It's not the water, it's the repetition of this mindless kind of self-care without input, without input. So in Mindsets of um, best in class, how you start your day is imperative, is imperative. I read a lot, and I'm sure you have, about people who say, oh, we sleep four hours a night. I noticed on your site you put, you sleep five, nine hours a night. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, and it's it kind of spread around that saying, oh, these amazing business people sleep four hours a night. Uh, if all you wanted was your business to succeed and your life to be my sailor brain is trying to insert profanity here. If all you wanted was your business to be great and your life to be a, a, a wreck, and by the way, hard to find that word. <laughs> your life to be a wreck, then sure, sleep four hours a night. And some of you might sleep four hours a night, but that isn't how your brain works best. It isn't how your human biology works best. You also said, I'd like to live to 120 years, it is not how 120 years happens either. <laughs> Right. It's how it works. In fact, in some ways, the four hour night person, I already know where I'm going to see the chinks in their armor because they're not actually ever going to be recovered, arrested, problem solving, creative thinking. So um, so I, I throw it out there because so many people approach me and say, hey, should I just sleep four hours a night? Yeah, if you want to be an anxious mess. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead and do that. And maybe your TikToks will blow up or people will come see you speak more, but you'll be a wreck. And I think you said, elevate your mind, not elevate your business and destroy your life. <laughs> so so the, the mindset there is the first 20, 20, 30 minutes of your day are extremely important to not be in a hurry and to minimize the external input, the news, all those things. Because your brain, you wake up in the morning with your brain, the cleanest it's ever going to be, the most prepared for you to direct the temperature and the tempo and the pressure of your software for the day. So start out, change the world, start off by making your bed because it changes your brain chemistry. You have accomplished something all that looks better. And then we do something of personal hygiene because your brain loves personal hygiene. It explodes with its ability to learn and understand, and perhaps most importantly, to listen, to listen. So um, I would say the one simple thing, look at your morning, look at your morning. If you wake up frantic, uh, you are minimizing your available IQ. And I don't mean EQ, emotional intelligence. That's being minimized as well, but there'll be a lot of eye rollers at emotional intelligence. That's okay. We understand that. That uh, IQ, EQ, they're, they're going to work like this. They're opposite sides of the same coin. So we're not going to understand our people if we're exhausted and frantic because a brain in fight, flight, or freeze is asking one question. Am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? It's not saying, AJ, how are you? <laughs> it's saying, AJ, how are you? So I know if I'm safe. <laughs> it's not saying, how are you? Because I care about you. So long-winded answer, but start your day off with the first half an hour being self-directed and motivated. It doesn't mean you're sitting in a chair, but it means you're doing things that make your brain work better. This is the computer system you have. You're nine hours of sleep you love to get. It's set up to use that computer system really well. Uh, and we go. So it can be a challenge for folks. Give yourself 20 minutes before picking up your phone or turning on the news or doing things. Um, you did it while you were sleeping with no problem at all. But all of a sudden we're awake and we're thinking, oh, the world's going to stop rotating if I don't look at my phone. No, it won't. 
it's so far I, I know I can't believe it either the world continues to rotate when I don't look at Facebook or the news or anything but it does <laughs> so. well said well said and and you covered some great habits here as well which was my second question and, and maybe we can tie this into your incredible work with uh, the Eagle One program and I'm going to say yeah. that again I said it in the intro but a 95% plus buds graduation rate, which the standard is five or 10%. And I mean, that's just extraordinary because it's already hard enough. I mean, it's some of the toughest training in the world of any type buds and you've got a 95% plus graduation rate. What are some of the key mindsets and actions that you, you know, maybe top two or three mindsets and actions that you really instill in these candidates, the fundamental principles that lead to, these incredible results. Yeah, thank you. Um, and thanks for the compliments on it. I'm very proud of what those kids do. And, and honestly, I'm very proud of, of, of being able to keep assessing the program and what it needs, or whether it be a, a corporation or whatever, but specifically for the Navy. Historically, the Navy uh, uses um, the Naval Special Warfare or the SEAL Team Pipeline, Naval Special Warfare Pipeline, as a way to gain uh, sailors in the Navy because we know 75 to 95 percent won't make it so one of the reasons it turns into such a problem is that the end justifies the means we want these folks kids to, or the navy wants their kids to get in there because they need them in the navy and they know 95 percent of them won't graduate so they're going to get them in regular jobs in the navy uh you and i are kind of kindred spirits here our job is to see excellence in easier more a successful life but also less painful you know, less, fewer obstacles. We get to learn from each other instead of each having to go down the school of hard knocks of everything we do. So um, the some of the things are here is, one of the things I'll share is that uh, my word matters to me. And this is a saying I use a lot with candidates, is that what we say and how we say it matters. Now we listen to neuroscience folks and Tony Robbins, all those great, fantastic people talk about, hey, positive self-talk and everything. Somehow, sometimes that seems to have morphed into lying to yourself. So there's a couple of phrasings I use. And one of them is, my word matters to me. And the other one is, stop lying to you, right? Stop lying to yourself. So um, when people talk about positive self-talk uh, and all these things, is that my word matters to me. In other words, everything I said I was going to do, my brain is either going to be more and more confident because I accomplished what I said, or more and more anxious because I'm not. So one of the keys to the habits or mindsets of the success of that program is we start to understand uh, that our word means something to us. The, it is very common for humans to run emotionally. And if we're really smart, we pretend it's logical. So we'll run emotionally, but then argue it in logic, which is fantastic because it is logical that we do this. So my word matters to me. So there's a, something I'll, I'll try to explain as we... Um, I was sitting uh, at USC. I was at USC a couple of years ago, talking to all the midshipmen. A hundred hard chargers, young men and women, just amazing, all lined up in uniforms. Like makes your heart sing. You get to see all that motivation. You know, they're uh, you figure they're between freshmen and seniors. There's about 200, 250 years of experience in there already. And I asked them. I said, "Hey, what's a leadership trait? What's one of the leadership traits you really value?" And of course, someone's going to come up and say integrity. And this will this should open up a conversation or tell you about your brain, tell folks about brain chemistry. And so I ask, what's integrity? A hundred percent of the time, the room goes silent because I've asked it a hundred times. A hundred percent of the time, the room goes silent because integrity is not a thing. But we sell it as a leadership trait as if it's a thing. Like we can find it at Walmart or we can you can get up and start your day this way and have it. Integrity, ethics, morality, it's a sliding scale. Depending on how we take care of ourselves and how we've trained ourselves. I would expect your integrity to be a little different if you and your family were starving and you were lost somewhere in the middle of nowhere and had to, had to eat, then it would be if you and I are here and we can go down to the store and shop how we want and do what we want. Integrity is a sliding scale. So a lot of times we talk about leadership traits. So when we talk about the candidates, what I'm actually doing is trying to help them understand how their head actually works and what small behaviors make it work better, best in class. You said at the beginning, 1%. 1%. Now, 1% may not seem like much, but when you're already looking at a level of 
high level effort pursuit of excellence you know i i would suggest that we're not really excellent because the more we understand the more we feel ignorant about the magnitude of understanding so it's like i'm i'm dumber every day than i've ever been before but i'm more excited by it because i won't live long enough to know anything but I certainly can pursue it while I'm here as understanding. But every time I know a little bit more about something, I realize it's much bigger than I ever thought it was, which means I'm dumber. You know? so it also minimizes self-judgment when you realize how big everything is that you will never live long enough or be great enough to know about. You stop judging yourself as being stupid and you just start learning more, you know, because we're always dumb according to the magnitude of things. We just get 1% better. So one of the things I bring up is about self-respect. So self-respect very simply uh, in the leadership biomechanics method is the ability to review yourself, right? Self-respect, the ability to review myself and direct my thoughts and actions to something that has a better benefit for me and the people around me and the people around me. Because uh, one of the litmus tests of self-respect is, am I adding value to my surroundings? Because mm -hmm. I could just save myself, right? And, uh, and I say this, that um, I could just save myself because I'm in fight, flight, or freeze. It's like if you have a child who's going to get run over by a bus, normally you wouldn't face plant your child on the sidewalk. But at that moment, you will toss that kid across on the sidewalk and face plant and do that later. So what was incredibly abusive a moment ago is now the single best course of action that you, you'll be thankful you did, right? So self-respect is the ability to review myself, which is so, so challenging. Fight, flight, or freeze system says, how are you a help or a threat to me? But the ability to review myself is to say, how am I adding value to my day and AJ's day. You know, how am I, am I, are we the better for this? But our default setting in our brain chemistry is, what does this mean to me? Is it friend or foe? Is it good or bad? Is it agree or disagree? All these things, that's amazing and it's necessary. But that's, I have one core value in everything I do. Everyone wins, everyone wins. If I help a client set up a deal, the other person walks away and says, I, I'm happy to, I'm satisfied. Let's not, I might not use the word happy because a lot of times deals have attention associated with it, but I'm satisfied. Everyone wins. And because so many deals and so many behaviors and so much self-judgment or thought or the concepts of respect and integrity are based on what do I need to win? Your prefrontal cortex is actually designed to say, how do AJ and I both create a relationship here that we're satisfied with. You wanted something, I wanted something. And yet, chance of what I found is it's very seldom the same thing. So it's easy for both of us to get what we want. It's very seldom the same. We want exactly the same thing. But um, uh, so self-respect, the ability to review yourself and direct your thoughts and actions to improve the situation. Uh, we talked about it before. You said you oh you said you always want to leave a company better than you found it. Well, we were saying at Eagle One, always leave a room better than you found it. Everyone wins. Everyone wins. It brings up your brain's ability to pay attention and to listen. If I look at a room and I leave it and I thought, oh, I can throw away this one thing. I can pick up this one thing. I can move this one thing. Don't get crazy about it. <laughs> People there are going, don't step on the crack. <laughs> right? Right? Listeners are like, perfect. I already don't step on the cracks. That's not what I meant. <laughs> Someone's therapist is going to be calling me saying, what did you do? I worked for years with this person. <laughs> so if you can just improve one thing, that is your 1%. And I believe I saw a reference to it on your website. Stephen Covey often says this. There are no little things. You know, uh, when people say, uh, you know, they wait to like, there's big things. Everything we do is a big thing because it's activating our brain chemistry. It's making us better or worse. It's making us better. There's never a zero sum game in your brain chemistry. It's better or worse. Anabolic, catabolic. It's what it's doing. So what I love about the uh, Navy SEAL program is those kids we hear on the news and people talk about millennials, gen, I don't even know what letter we're on. We have to start doubling up letters pretty soon, Gen X, Z, whatever, right? People talk to me about that, I don't even know what they mean. But um, 
what's happening is there's a depotentialization of society, especially your wealthier societies. And the US is one of them, right? So there's a depotentialization. It doesn't mean they're not more capable. It means we've structured a system that makes everyone less capable. You and I too, you ever see, how, oh, have you seen the video? We're training fleas in a jar. Seen that little 60 second video? No. Oh, should. Uh, there's a little video about training fleas in a jar. 60 second video where they put a bunch of fleas in a jar. I don't think there was any fleas harmed in the making of this movie, but they put the fleas in the jar and the fleas are trying to jump out of the jar or whatever. Well, they put a lid on the jar. Three days later, the fleas, they learned they're hitting their head on the ceiling of so they don't try to jump out of the jar anymore. They don't hit the lid of the jar. Then they take the lid off. Well, the fleas never jump out because they've been conditioned to never jump higher than the jar. They depotentialized because it's painful up there. They keep getting knocked down. Well, then they take the whole jar away and the fleas don't jump out of the confines of where the jar used to be. They still jump within the confines. What's amazing is then the fleas reproduce and their offspring don't jump out of the confines of the jar. If there was ever a demonstration of the depotentialization of a system, that's where we're at. But what I found in Team Eagle One is those young fleas can still jump out of the jar higher than the jar. They just don't know they can. Their brains have been conditioned like our brains are conditioned. What by And by no one thing, this is not a political statement, this is everything that caused this. Uh, the human brain wants to find a simple reason. Oh, it's left-handed people. They ruined everything. Oh, no, right-handed people. There's more of them. They ruined everything. It's not the way it works. There's a million things that happened, and all of them contributed. So um, our brain wants to find a very simple reason. So the real strength of Team Eagle One is, one, we have a real understanding, as best that I can, of an understanding of how leadership and the human brain actually works. Um, we have sold leadership as something you do that somehow manipulates other people. Positively, the end goal, how I gain your trust. It isn't. If I train my brain to work as good as it can, you and I will tend to work well together. I won't be gaining your trust. We will be realizing our trust. Well I said. didn't manipulate you. You know, it's um, so a lot of times wonderful. I listen to people with their color coding and all their things about leadership, FNPG or J or wonderful stuff. Love it all. Love it all. But a lot of that is designed on how would I treat you if you're having a certain kind of day? Where actually the uh, neuroscience teaches us, how would I treat me no matter what? And then we're going to navigate life better together right? I'm not training someone to go to the SEAL team. So those are just the metrics I use for strength and conditioning. I'm training someone to navigate any aspect of life because their brain is capable of it. And now it's a matter of whether you and I can physically train for this, but we need to go to another job. Let's say you're a rock star in math and sciences. And, and, we're, and you're like, well, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be that, uh, the runner I needed to be for there. But all of a sudden you realize you've trained your brain. You're a rock star over here. So you're an A plus player over here. So the real claim to fame of the Team Eagle One program is that I use the expression, you don't work this hard and not find out exactly who you are. And those kids come here and they get to work this hard. I never bust on them. This is, there's, there, is, uh, there is no value in high level leadership to uh, criticism or demoralizing or dehumanizing. I've never found the value. I'm always gonna to have to rebuild the part of that building that I destroyed. Even if I'm testy or tired or irritable, I'm like crap, I'm gonna rebuild the building I just destroyed right there. So, but it's also not lowering the standards. I raise the standards and provide the path. So the success of the program is I looked at all the problems. What are the injuries? Well, that's easy. Every injury in a business is voluntary. Anything that happens to a business, you plan for it. It is like you and I were in the business of sitting back and watching the chess game, right? So we get to turn around and say, I see exactly how you got here. This was amazing. This was amazing. This app right here eventually cost us and, and it showed up over here. Same thing in the candidates. They have an injury rate. They have a dropout rate. They have an emotional rate and I simply reverse engineered it and add a lot of science and effort and psychology to it and said, and the biomechanics of sport and said, here's, Here's what we need to do to make a candidate understand themselves that they're going to the right place. We get to understand that they're on the right seats on the bus, right? There's a reference from our, our, our there's a reference from our world that we like, and they get to understand 
Remember, motivation isn't created, it's developed. It doesn't just appear, it's developed. So if you have an uninspired group of people at your work or wherever, it's developed over time. And I think people think we're supposed to come in the door ready to rock. No, no, that's the mentor and coach's job is to turn around and say, I'm gonna give you good information, but I'm also gonna understand that I have to step by step by step. So that's a super long-winded rambling answer. So forgive me for that. But I get so pumped up about how much the kids do. Business corporations are the same way. You don't have to have all these voluntary injuries. You don't have to say, God, every year or two, we face this or face this. It's always planned for other than a hurricane or earthquake or whatever. It's always in the plan. So when I look at a candidate, I can tell you when a candidate takes off on their one mile race, whether they're going to have their personal best So the first four steps. And, you know, you have a history in physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, all this stuff. You have great history uh, as uh, you spent a lot of time, as I think I have in trying to see all these things on a different level and experience helping people on them. That's why I love, one of the things I love about your, your work is um, very uh, incredibly well-rounded, like almost more than a lot of people can handle. You know, it's really impressive. I but in the first it. four steps, I can tell you whether a candidate's going to have their personal best because how you start is how you finish. Yeah. How you start is how you finish. Uh, just uh, so anyway, I'm going to stop rambling because I get pumped up and uh, ramble. So I'll get back, get me back on track. This is what the Navy does for me. It gets me back on track. <laughs> well, you gave us so many good personal performance principles and leadership principles there in that last five or 10 minutes where you know I found that the best teachers, the best coaches, they teach in principles. And uh, whether it's John Wooden in basketball or Nick Saban in football or Marshall Goldsmith in executive coaching or Coach Mack and everything that he does with special forces and business owners and leaders – uh, you're teaching us principles that can apply to anything and everything. And you said it yourself, these things apply to multiple things, not just leadership, but business and also performance as a, a SEAL candidate or a SEAL. And one of my all time favorite things I've ever heard someone say on this show, what you shared with us. And again, so number one, great coaches and teachers, they teach in principles, what you did. Number two, they make the complex simple. Okay, which you did in, in, in some of these mantras and these principles. And again, one of the best things I've ever heard on this show or anybody say, which I'm going to remember forever, uh, and I'm going to give Coach Matt credit, was, uh, you know, you were talking about self-respect and you said the one core value I have in everything I do, everyone wins. Oh, man. Talk about a Swiss Army knife principle for success, personally, professionally, be I healthier, the happier. The Swiss Army knife. I lit as soon as you said, I thought, oh my gosh, that was life changing. This the idea that that concept, because it takes all the Swiss Army knife tools to even comprehend it. People ask me all the time, how can everyone win in a deal? I said, see, that's the problem. Our limbic system is the strongest system we're born with. It's designed to keep us alive because we're too dumb and we're too young and we're too weak to survive on our own. So our parents help us. And the one thing we do is, am I safe? Am I safe? Am I super happy with ice cream? Am I safe? I cry when I, when I don't want to take a nap. Your, your prefrontal cortex doesn't even develop until you're 20 to 25 years old to a point, it's developing the whole time, to a point that is super useful. So we've spent most of our formative years and then our educational years, most people end up in their uh, undergrad or up to their master's before 26 years old without even having the computer fully available to us that we're trying to use as wisdom and motivation, all these things. I love it. Everyone wins is simply a language that we have to learn to speak and understand, not because we're not born with it, because I want the toy. I want the ice cream. I don't want to take a nap. That's not everyone wins. That's I'm not winning. <laughs> and you're the cold and you're the cause of it. So oh, the, I'm never going to forget that. The Swiss army knife, all of those tools together have to be understood and utilized. How many times you get a Swiss army knife? You're like, I don't even know what that does. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> your brain can't, st your brain creates anxiety when we haven't opened the, what the tools. I love it. I'm never going to forget this reference. Uh, the Swiss army knife. There's so many things on a Swiss Army knife. You're like, I know it's cool looking, but I've never used those four things. The little tiny things we do train our brain to be more useful. Abraham Maslow said it, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you, you will not get to 
love and family relationships and intimacy, respect of self, respect by others, critical thinking, problem solving, um, uh, uh, in anything inspirational, uh, spontaneous. You can't be spontaneous when we haven't taken care of those baselines. So it's um, all the information's there. It's just, and those books and everything were amazing. They got those high level concepts. And then our job became, uh, what do we actually do? Like, right. I get it. If I wanted more integrity, what do I actually do? Because integrity is not a thing. It's a byproduct of things. You know, it's the fact that you're prepared to pull out your Swiss army knife and navigate situations. What is trust? People talk about trust. The candidates will always tell me in business, anytime I'm in a business uh, series and I'll say, look, what is trust? Because people say, oh, well, a leader has to have trust. Well, you don't actually, you could, you could be a manager and not be trusted. Trust is repeated observable behavior, nothing more, nothing more. If you think you trust people and you haven't seen them behave, that's just an expectation. It's not really trust. So trust is repeated observable behavior. So it's not how I manipulate you. It's how I keep showing up. If I, I was in a, I was at a, uh, on the, uh, down in Coronado at the uh, Naval Amphibious Base at the Special Warfare Command, BUDS training. And I do a TikTok of training, but I'm not on camera on TikTok. Only, I'm, I'm seldom in front of the camera. I, I, I'm the guy with the camera and I'm training the candidates. So uh, I've had this training program. So sometimes you'll get 300,000 people watching a training. People just love it. They love to see these young folks working so hard and everything. Really supportive, fantastic uh, TikTok community. And uh, there was uh, one of a candidate who had gone through my program and his friend and another candidate who just quit buds. You will carry quitting a Naval Special Warfare program around like a ball and chain, around, not even around your ankle, but around your neck. You carry it around like everyone sees it on you. We've made billion dollars worth of movies. We have books. We've sold it as the, the pinnacle of manhood. It isn't. There's so many ways to be a fantastic professional, all these things, but they don't make movies out of all those ways. They don't make movies of parents who just keep going after it and going after it every day and trying to make good decisions and navigate life with their kids. That's, that's, that's a, that's more manly for a, for a dad and, you know, womanly, whatever for a mom, that's, that's better than any movie I've ever seen about war, but it's just not fun to watch. So nobody makes a movie, but I was talking to one of the candidates and I said, Hey, look, um, are you judging yourself? judging the crap out of yourself. I said, you know, and he said, yeah. I said, well, I don't want to take that away from you because it's your God given right to judge the crap out of yourself. I said, but what I will say is no one else cares. In three months, whoever you're dating doesn't care. Your mom's probably thrilled that you're going to go to a regular job in the Navy and not be in the SEAL team. You know, uh, typically the SEAL team is a relatively safe job because of the training and money and teamwork, but it doesn't matter. My mom still thinks I was going to die every day. Right. So, and I said, but no one cares. I said, you're going to care and you're going to carry this forever. I promise you'll never forget. You'll never forget that you quit this program, which is another reason I train the candidates. I'm obsessed with their success because if they don't succeed on my watch, I have helped them with the guilt and shame of that ball and chain. But long story short, so I was in the exchange store and I said, look, you're never going to forget this, but let me see if I can't keep it from getting worse for you. No one else cares. They don't care. They care how you show up tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. They don't care about your history that you didn't graduate from BUDS. They weren't in BUDS. They don't care. I said, but you're going to judge yourself. I just want to help you not make it worse because it's your God-given right to feel regret or judgment or all that. Well, behind me, there's a woman behind the counter and she says, you're the voice from TikTok. <laughs> and I had to laugh because I'm not on camera. And I said, what? She goes... I've always wondered if you were just pretending to be that nice and pretending to be that supportive or understanding. She goes, I was actually texting my friend going, oh my God, I'm listening to the guy who does the TikToks and he's saying the same thing. She goes, he's not full of it at all. And I said, wow, that's so flattering to think that you are who you say you are, you know, in this. But the point being is she said, I've never heard anybody say, go ahead and judge yourself. Because everyone keeps saying, oh, you shouldn't feel bad. Of course you should. If you feel bad about something, that's your brain telling you, I got to navigate this. I'm not going to get over it. I'm not going to just let it go. I have to do something else. You said it when we first started talking. I have to develop a confidence level in the area that this has told me I now have a confidence injury in. 
right? It's not touchy feely. It's not woo woo. It's literally saying, I use the expression, we have a negative gym and we have a positive gym. And if I just went through a bunch of negative gym reps with this arm, this negative arm, super strong, I got to do some positive gym reps. I'm not going to forget the negative, nor do I want to. I'm going to train my brain to develop a level of positive response and navigating. I'm going to learn to trust myself more in that area or in another area because that, that guilt and shame is never going to go away. I'm sure you got listeners out there who are like, man, people always tell me to get over it. You're not getting over it. You're building positive gym responses so you have more confidence than you have brutal negativity. God help us if a brain just forgot. The T-Rex would have eaten us a long time ago. Not that we were around with the T-Rex. Bear with me, folks, on that on that uh, mixing up of timelines of evolution. <laughs> so, but if you listen to some speakers, they will tell you the dinosaurs were here 5,000 years ago. And so were we. Let's just go with that TikTok today. <laughs> so, I don't know what's true, but I love hearing it all. I don't know what's true, but go ahead, please. <laughs> Amen. A amen, sir. And it's, uh, you know, it's very cool. Uh, what you do on TikTok as well. So check out coach Mac on, on TikTok, uh, for sure. And, uh, here's a, a, a fun question, but there's, there's definitely so, a lot to be learned from it as well. Uh, fun fact about coach Mac, uh, he trained Thomas Jane for the Punisher, which is, uh, my brother, Mike and I, uh, we, we were talking about this. It's one of, um, our favorite movies. Uh, superhero movies, action movies. It was one of the original uh, Marvel movies and Tom Jane did such a great job. And he said it himself that, you know, he, he was re really able to transform, you know, with your help into uh, a special forces soldier to, to portray a special forces soldier, uh, you know, from being an actor to that. C can you uh, tell us what you did in terms of his mindset and how you trained him to deliver such a realistic and, and great performance, legendary performance? Well, thank you. Uh, he's uh, uh, an incredible individual. So, um, and, and that's what it takes, of course, right? It's like our, in our coaching fractional VP, the Navy SEAL, that it takes incredible people for us to do incredible work. I'm always, I, I have been uh, given the gift of being surrounded by incredible people. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, um, I can never do incredible work, you know? So uh, <laughs> it's, uh, talk about the you know the law of attraction if you will in some ways that if i don't attract incredible people what we end up with is uh, incredible potential and a tremendous amount of frustration you know and demoralization and everything so um he was um first of all when we started training together he was you know, just an animal just on point on point uh, i remember the film company the, the, the won't it don't, doesn't matter people's names but the the owner of the film company had called up and he said hey we have this many weeks to accomplish this much. Uh, can it be done? And uh, if you know me even this long, uh, as much as your listeners are, I look at the science, the psychology, the emotional content, the you know universal kind of, you might call it spirituality, whatever, at everything I can, in every way I can. I want to make sure I've left no stone unturned so that we have an arsenal of tools and that we're not becoming obstacles to ourselves because remember our limbic system is designed to present an obstacle right our fight flight or freeze system is designed to slow us down from progressing that's smart so we don't run off the edge of the cliff thinking i could flap my arms and fly um, our limbic system says no you should think about this you've never flapped your arms and flown before so it's probably not going to work on this cliff so with um with thomas a uh, fantastic guy challenging beginning because there's a tight timeline but when the company he had said can you do it and i said well it can be done uh, i often i often joke that only nasa uses more science and psychology and and understanding uh, than i do and i finish the joke by saying i'm not actually sure they do anymore i might have them beat but um but and you wouldn't know it because we're not geeking out about science we're simply saying hey given the parameters of what we think we understand what are we going to do so this is something that I really thought of when looking at your site and your work and your books too. Uh, we're all speaking English. And yet when you're a specialist at something, I'm, I'm reluctant to use the term expert, a very military thing. We, we do those expert shooting ribbons, but that's just the military. But I'm, I, I will say, if you're specializing in something, um, it's, um, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. So if with, with, but with Thomas, I always say, if you're specializing in something, it matters 
how all the parties are, as you and I just said. But the other thing is, when it comes to physical training, biomechanics, when it comes to leadership biomechanics, you'll notice, and I'm sure you've seen this so much when you start talking about something, if I look at like the titles of your book um, and just look at the titles and those things, that sometimes you'll see someone's eyes glaze over. Like, yeah, I know, I've heard this before. I watched Joe Dispenza. I have, I have this, I recommended Tony Robbins thing. I got this, I got that. I know, I know. And you know you've lost them because they actually can't hear you. Because what's happening here is when we talk about biomechanics, if I talk to you about how to get freakishly strong, like forget 1%, 30%, 300%, different body parts, right? 30% in a bicep strength, 300% in leg strength. Those are easy to do, different sizes of surface area. And then minimizing injury, also very easy to do. But excellence is not intuitive, never. Intuitive is quitting because your brain is designed to slow you down and make quit. It's safer if you never learn anything. So when they called and said, can it be done? I said, yes, it can be done. We just got to put the science into it. So the first challenge with anything is that people are all speaking English, but they're not speaking your language. Like I can take a client and make them physically stronger in six months. It used to take, it took me like six years because I wasn't smarter then for my own journey. I'm, I'm not just duplicating what I did. I'm, I'm getting it going. So with the, the challenge with a new person, like when Thomas Jane came in, because he's on fire. When that guy punches in, you got to get out of his way. He's not stopping. He's like, so, so it's not that I necessarily created his personality. He unleashed it. So we had a dodgy patch in the beginning because uh, everybody thinks they're doing the right thing. And my job isn't to go with what you think. It's actually to demonstrate that we're going to go 3x, 4x, 7x, and, and on the timeline that's safe and effective so that your company or your joints <laughs> or, your, or your body parts don't implode, right? Same thing. So um, the biggest thing I did with him is uh, we just had to, I had to help him understand that the approach that most people are using to strength, to success, to business and all these things, it's actually average, and it's being sold as exceptional. It's being sold as a pathway to excellence because we watch a guy who looks like he hasn't taken a shower for two and a half weeks. He's in a $900 ratty old t-shirt says Metallica on the front or something. And he's doing a podcast and making tens and tens of millions of dollars to do it. That's fantastic. But for all you folks listening, that's not you. Cause I really want you to take a shower now and then like, that would just be great. <laughs> you know, so are the people around you. That's not you. That's not how we work best. That's how the anomaly worked. And the human brain loves anomaly. So with Thomas, what we got in, we had, when I first met him, we had six or seven weeks to do something that really should have taken about 16 because I, I met him kind of late in the game. Um, so the first few days, I just had to act as if I had to go through the motions and say, because the long story short, he had a trainer, he had a trainer and a fine trainer and a safe trainer, just not a trainer who was going to go SEAL team level. That's just wasn't the background there but a wonderful wonderful trainer safe trainer effective trainer we needed nasa love we were going to mars right mm -hmm. so um so all i really did and this is the same thing i do with companies with candidates i just started going down the baseline because they don't speak your language so they'll say yeah we're in the gym again we're using this yeah we're talking about leadership yeah we're talking about what to do in this situation that situation um but but they don't speak your language and i think you probably really relate to this i'm just guessing because you you have a wide range of being able to have your language of business development personal physical development everything you got history so and then about three days into it um he was going through it because there's a lot of tension around transition nobody nobody wants to have a change in the middle when they have something going on um about three days into it he came in and he said uh wow he said I haven't been this strong in over a year and a half of training. And in one week, I added a level of strength that I didn't think possible. And I thought, now, now, we're not speaking the same language yet, but you're in the right dictionary. Because now we're on the way to awesome. And mm -hmm. see, when I said incredible things only happen with incredible people that get together. Well, I have 
I have what I call almost an obsessive knowledge or understanding on how to go to that next level um, in a few areas, right? I'm only good at a few things and I stick with it. I don't play basketball. I suck. You're, I'm going to be the comic relief if we play basketball together. That's the way it's going to be. I don't mind. It doesn't matter. I'm, but I'm probably going to sit on the sidelines and just cheer you on. That's the way it goes. So after that day when he came in, it was like, so one of the first things that I think he did and made him so wonderful is one, he's an animal. When he punches in, wow. I, I literally designed every single calorie he ate because I've done a lot of nutrition, Bridget Jones, all that stuff, diet, all that, you know, all the kind of up and down weights and all this. There's a way to eat differently and not feel horrible. But anyway, another concept. So that guy, I, I often say he didn't eat a stick of gum that wasn't on the plan. So it was, he was able to do, we were able to do something incredible because he was incredible. So when he punched in, so, um, so I had the knowledge base and the ability to go there and it actually took a demonstration. And that's, what's amazing in the right business environment, in the right Navy SEAL candidate environment, in the right Thomas Jane environment, it's only going to take about a week. Leadership biomechanics, biomechanics of sport, the biomechanics of neuroscience it only takes about a week before you go wow i'm different this is different i don't get torqued out as easily i think more clearly so the things i'm talking about are not like wait six months and see what's going on so he came in one week later we had worked out three times and he came in and that's all it takes i don't mean to fix it because our brain is our brain it takes a minute but all it took so he walked in the next day and he goes you know what i've never been this strong in about a year and a half and then he was in it to win it like crazy. And so he was in it to win it. And I immersed myself even more as like, cause who doesn't love working with people who are like now realize there's a language out there. I don't speak. So you said it when we first started talking, you said, uh, it's the coaching business, the mentoring business, the fractional VP business, whatever you want to call it is really, really hard. And yet it's sold as being this thing where I just sit in a chair and tell people what to do. I tell people to do stuff. I couldn't do myself. That's ridiculous. I took a course and now, you know, I, I went and took the course and now I do it. So I'll throw out some things. The master's level of exercise physiology doesn't even go to the gym. Theory for years. There's no way I could take you on theory alone and take you to the moon. That's crazy. We tried it and then a bunch of monkeys died. And there's other people and we finally got it right unless you're arguing that it didn't happen, whatever. So with Thomas Jane, the amazing thing is who he was. So for your listeners and everything, I have to throw it out there. You can find the most incredible mentor, incredible teacher. But one of the first things to understand is if you're working with someone who's way, way up there in that thing, I have to know I don't speak their language. I just want to learn from their language. But I can't say, well, I use the expression when a candidate says, don't worry, coach, I got this. I always say, oh, good. I'm going to go home and pick the uniform I want to get buried in because I got this or I get it, it means you're going to kill us both. We're both dying out here, you know? So Thomas Jane turned on like a light switch. Every, I, I, I had every calorie counted for in the daytime, except for usually one meal because your head needs a break, all those things, exactly the right amount of time off, which is critical. It's critical, overreaching and overtraining, critical. But that guy was, if every client was like Thomas Jane, <laughs> I go to sleep at night and think, man, we really accomplished something today because past the first week of demonstrating that there's a language out there that people don't speak about how to get freakishly strong and, uh, and durable and all these things. So in six weeks, people would come up and say, it's on steroids. And I was like, nope, but that's how much science can go into training is that your friends are going to go, come on, man, you can't be doing this naturally. Of course you can. There's so, well, I think I saw a Mark Devine quote on your thing where he had said, there's a Navy SEAL saying, you're 10 times more capable than you think you are. Your brain is designed to hold you back. That's smart. So you don't run off the edge of the cliff or forget the T-Rex is there. So anyway, he was an incredible person, is an incredible person. And man, like a light switch. I had one of the best times training him of anybody because that guy, that guy, when once he bought into the plan, he was the plan. It was like, it was like he was taking no prisoners. <laughs> so, so his personality that you see in the Punisher is actually his personality of attacking everything. How we do anything is how we do everything. And once he started doing everything, he is an animal. Like 
he was a vigilante about his program. So and he plays a vigilante. So I was really glad to see you brought it up because it's kind of a blast from the past, but he was a joy to work with because he accomplished in six weeks what would have taken most people two years. He just needed the right information to go with who he was as a person. And uh, in this case, I had the right information. So I'm, I was just fortunate. Like I said, I'm only good at a few things. That's one of them. Uh, so many great uh, performance lessons right there. So again, great principles, you know, a few things, I'll just maybe choose three here that really hit me. And I'm going to watch this again, myself, this interview and, and pick out more. One is that uh, find that mentor or expert who can take you to the top of the mountain, who's got that NASA level of knowledge or better, go out and seek that person who's done it and who can take you there and who has the mindset to say, this is possible in a week. You can do this in a week. I've done it and others have done it. And they can transfer that knowledge in a way that makes the complex simple for Tom to execute and do. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, the power of sheer commitment uh, that Tom had and just, you know, that you had to be a SEAL, just that un almost unreasonable level of commitment that we all have that we can unlock if we have the right teacher or mentor or coach like yourself. Mm -hmm. um, th those were two big ones. You know, how you do anything is how you do everything. I think that's just huge. Um there was a few more there, uh, but I, I want to be respectful of your time here and maybe a few rapid uh, fire questions, if that's OK with you. Yeah, whatever. Anything. This is I, I love. Uh, there's a there's an expression I use everyone. You only lead as well as you follow. And I love following people's lead because all the experience and everything. I look at the bookshelf behind your books and your work. And I just think, like you said, um, uh, you speak a language that if people are around you long enough, if they're really curious, they hear it right away. But if they're a little bit resistant, so I always think, oh, you got to hang out with them a little longer. Uh, people think coaching is easy. It's not. A, a coach is going to the Super Bowl with you. And that's the downside. When we talk about coaching and mentoring, one of the challenges of it is that uh, it's being sold as this easy thing. You go take a course. There, you can't swing a dead cat on LinkedIn without finding 27.5 you know, people who are saying coaches. And I love them for the attempt. But this is not high school football. Like, you, this is your livelihood. This is your physical livelihood, your professional livelihood, your relationship livelihood. Like people, um, uh, they got to be obsessed and immersed. There's nothing easy about coaching and mentoring and everything. It's a job for a person who can be obsessed. And I find a lot of people get into it going, oh, my life would be so much easier. And I think, oh, then you're going to be at the junior high, but you're going to be at the Pop Warner level, which is fine. It's great to be at the Pop Warner level, but I don't think I don't think you and I want to help people be in Pop Warner. <laughs> I actually think we're I think you and I are equally obsessed with saying I'm going to a little saying I'm going to prove myself wrong every day. I am desperate to be wrong. Desperate is the only way I make sure I'm not letting someone down. Is when I am desperate to be wrong. It is so easy to be right because there's always someone around you who agrees with you. But please, rapid fire, I appreciate it. But be desperate to be wrong because it makes you listen to people instead of saying, oh, I've heard that before. I know that. I'm like, I don't know anything. I want to hear it all over again. I'll tell you, if you were going to do one thing that really makes your head go crazy, that really makes your prefrontal cortex do things, listen like it's the first time. That's that's an incredible trick for your prefrontal cortex. As soon as your brain says, oh, I know this, I've heard this before, this person's too new in my company to have good information, that is your brain creating anxiety and getting dumber. You are literally depressing the chemistry of interest. It is a lack of self-respect, the ability to review myself and direct my thoughts and behaviors to a better outcome. So listen like it's the first time. And you'll know this because when you say, if your brain, if someone's brain says, oh man, I don't agree with that, you've dumbed yourself down. Because I didn't need to agree with you. I needed to say, oh, that's kind of interesting. I never even thought of it that way. I wouldn't have even thought that was correct before. See, I'm not saying it's correct. So listen like it's the first time will change your whole company. It'll change your whole family. I even do it with little kids who are repeating themselves. If I find myself going, oh, this little kid said that 32 times, I think, oh, that's your brain telling you that if you punch into what they're saying, you are going to elevate the mind, elevate the relationship. As I love your phrasing, elevate the relationship. Your brain is constantly giving you signals of when it's about to explode to the positive, but it resists that because it takes effort. So to li really listen to you and not worry whether I agree or disagree, initially it takes effort. Pretty soon it's seamless. Like when I listen to people now, I'm not looking to agree or disagree. I just want to hear them. 
like here we are it's so self-honoring to say you're talking about something i just want to hear it because if not i should leave the room <laughs> I, should get, I should stop pretending that we actually are accomplish anything but when you train your brain to not work on good bad right wrong or do you disagree listen like it's the first time your problem solving creativity professional empathy is what i call it is going to explode you are going to be trusted more because you're simply more trustworthy it's no bs you are more trustworthy when you listen like it's the first time so i uh, I, I i ramble but please go ahead rapid oh. fire oh well said well said and and coach used this term twice already today obsessed he is obsessed with the success of his seal candidates of his business clients <laughs> And that's uh, my, one of my mentors, uh, Dr. Jason Selk. I believe he's the, the best performance psychologist in the world. He also says the exact same thing as Coach Max says. I mean, those two speak the same language. You have to be obsessed with the, the success of the people you lead, of you coach. That's the coach you want, someone who's obsessed with your success, which is, again, talk about you know Pop Warner to high school to the NFL Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame coaches are obsessed with the success of their players, and that's you know, Coach Mack, Jason Selk, you know, you're going to find that at, at the, you know, the best of the best. Uh, Coach Mack, some of your favorite personal development books or biographies that you recommend, that you'd recommend well, to our listeners? You know, this was the toughest question for me since I watch and listen to things every time when I read that. And thank you for sending them in advance because I got a chance to think about it. I'm going to uh, go a little off the, the classic track here. I have two books that I give away all the time. Now, uh, one is, this is a little off off the line, but it was really meaningful to me. As, as a kid, I read the book, Jonathan Livingston Siegel. Very simple it, about working and striving for more and realizing that you are not like the flock. See, no one in the flock is just like the flock. We all have a superpower. So we all have something we do that if we were to pursue it, we'd be like, wow, I'm actually like a specialist in that area. That's where I, the SEAL teams, for example, is based on being incredibly well-trained at the baseline and then watching what our specialties are, watching what we're exceptional at. So we're not machines. We're a machine who functions as a team. And then our specialties come up and we train those and rely on those. So the first one, I have read Jonathan Livingston Siegel every single year since I was probably seven. And every single year I take away something different. And that's like when I say, listen, like it's the first time also Watch things that you're watching or that you're playing for your employees or whatever. watch them like it's the first time your brain goes crazy. Mm -hmm. But so that's the one of the books I give away a lot. But the other one is from Ramesh Balsakar and uh, it's called Consciousness Speaks. Consciousness Speaks, Ramesh Balsakar. I give this away a lot too. The beautiful thing about this particular book is you can open up anywhere and read a couple pages, which I love. My brain loves that. It's not a front to back book. Uh, Jonathan Living Siegel is short. You're going to read it in a day or two. Uh, but you'll want to read that again and get something. This is, both of these books are written in a manner that if you really wanted to get a feeling for how your, how your creativity and problem solving and understanding of unlimited potential, I use the expression a lot, unleash unlimited potential, right? Because once you start to unleash it, you stop thinking there's a limitation to it. The only thing that keeps me from getting better is my willingness to listen, learn, and demonstrate, right? So if, as long as I'm willing to listen, learn, and demonstrate to everyone, see, if I'm not listening to everyone, then I start filling my time being in rooms I shouldn't be in because we're not adding value. I can't find self-respect in a room that I'm like, wow, this is so, I find this to be so offensive or such not a good use of my time. That's a lack of self-respect. I can't review myself and direct my thoughts and behaviors. So consciousness speaks from Ramesh Belsakar is a lot about the concept of duplicity. I think I can be separate from it. I can't. When that, like, I think I can be isolated. I can isolate myself, but we're all going to be connected. It doesn't matter. We can talk about it in uh, neuroscience, psychology, business, the fact that you got to pay your phone bill. It doesn't matter. Don't think of it necessarily as a woo-woo thing. Consciousness Sneaks with Ramesh Balsakar and Jonathan Livingston Siegel. I reread them in part or in whole every single year. And I love watching what I take away differently from them. So those are the two, those are the two things I give away the most. Oh, beautiful. I'm definitely looking those up when we're done. Uh, yeah. I, I want to seek out those, those two, because they, they, one speaks to mindset and one speaks to action, but they're both mindset books. And I'm sure there's both action steps in, in both of them, which I love when those things are in tandem, the right mindset, the right action steps. 
Uh, coach, what is your one set, uh, one sentence definition of excellence? Mm. It's the pursuit of adding more value. The pursuit of adding more value. I, uh, I, I love that that you brought to a sentence. The pursuit of adding more value is uh, your listeners, you define it how you want because you'll define adding more value today in one way. And then next week you'll say, wait, that also means I could add more value here. So I don't want to box you in. The pursuit of adding more value, your brain is so much better at being you than mine is to being you. So <laughs> the pursuit of adding more value. Oh, that's a great one. That is a, what a great definition. How about your one sentence, uh, one sentence definition of service? Mm. The value that I add that didn't count for what I was getting. The value, I'm just making this up. So the value that I add to my surroundings or the community that did not take into account what I was getting out of it. It is to serve without that internal compass saying, what about me? What's in it for me? There's an expression, if you want more, give more. You're, I, I have found that wealth comes from, if you have wealth in any way, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, if you want more, give more. And uh, you, you seem like a person too is, oh, you said it on your website. You said hundreds of hours before you ever charge the dime. Now that's not the way for everybody. That was your way to say, right. here's how I'm creating this surface area and all these things. So really wonderful. It's my way as well. I give away time. I give away as much time as I ever bill for or more. I, I volunteer more time a week than I go for. Now I'm not That's in incredible. a get rich plan and because I'm, I'm in a be comfortable and love helping people plan. So someone else's objective might be, I really, really want to make more money. That's my thing right now. That's fantastic. I'm not knocking it. Just make sure if you want more, give more companies tend to be sales or service, but not both mm -hmm. sales doesn't create service, but great service creates sales. So you get a sum of both with one, but companies tend to be sales or service. If you want more, give more. We are in a challenging time on the service aspect, like in my 58 years, I've never seen before. So if you want more, give more. I have a feeling in the world of internet and viral stuff, service is going to be king again. We can be destroyed so easily by word of mouth. Now, like never before, you can topple a multi-billion dollar company by word of mouth. It's That's right. insane. It's crazy. So, but it's true. And maybe good, bad, or indifferent, we got to work with it. Well said. Well, if they follow your two principles there of excellence and service and your definitions, that gives us a great chance of not getting toppled and being successful in right. today's world. I mean, if you live those values you just laid out there, as well as everyone wins, uh, no matter what, I think we would all have a lot more success personally and professionally as well. Uh, Coach Mac, where can everyone find you in your work? I appreciate the, uh, the outreach for that. I have two, two ways to get in touch with me. One, you can find me at john at directaction.pro, john at directaction.pro. That's J-O-H-N. I answer every single email so myself. So if it takes a minute, bear with me, I'm going to get back to you. No matter what questions, answers, anything, information, free information is king. And I have two websites, one on the physical side of things for the training and leadership, Eight weeks to awesome.com, eight weeks to awesome.com, spell it out, E I G H T, eight weeks to awesome. And then my regular business website is directaction.pro, like my email, directaction.pro. I get back to everybody, it doesn't cost you anything. All of my free programs, which I always have, are not, they're free, but if you wanted real information, they are the real program. And if you want to work with me more specifically, somebody can pay money. I want no obstacle mm -hmm. to success. So uh, the, obviously people get more when they pay for things, but the information I give in my free programs is exactly, just takes longer since they're one. I do that if you want more give more so my free programs every single week I have them on uh, Wednesday and Thursday Wednesday morning Thursday afternoon on zoom uh, you'll see them on my eight weeks to awesome.com and directaction.pro it is real information I don't sell anything there so um, it is just to help you 
which helps me. Helping you helps me, and it really, really does. That's not a line. My, my life is better when I get to see people succeed, and I get to see what I could have done better and what I want to do better. And so you help me by using those, those programs. Oh, beautiful. Well, Coach Mack, thank you for living a best-in-class life of excellence and service and being such an inspiration. Uh, th thanks for your service to our country. Thanks for all the volunteer work you do. Thanks for leaving me and us 10 times better than you found us today. <laughs> Uh, you flatter me as you as you have you flatter me with your attention and just being here but that's it thank you so much <laughs> i'm no one of consequence i'm just relentless i often say the single greatest uh trait i have is i'm too stupid to say no so i just keep going <laughs> i'm just too stupid to say no <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> that's it well i think we should all maybe uh take that into account um, yeah. say, saying yes more often and uh, not saying no, not quitting and, and just staying in motion. Uh, you know, and, and uh, thanks to your, uh, for your inspiration of serving at the highest level. Again, I appreciate you coach Mac and I can't wait to uh, share this episode with the world. Thank you so much. You really, it's been truly uh, an honor and flattering to be here. Anytime we get to spread the word and doing it together was just brilliant for me. So thank you. I love it. My honor. Thanks again, coach Mac. My pleasure.